Good morning. Good morning. Welcome Good to uh, But Now Fellowship. Thank God for all of you that are here. Um, thank God for uh, uh, this day. Uh, so we thank you for those who are tuned in online. Uh, thank God for all of you. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, I, uh, for those of you who are here, uh, who actually already ordered the shirt, we have the shirts in the back. Uh, uh, so if you're here and you ordered one, uh, uh, you can pick those up today. For those of you who uh, who uh, ordered the shirts, uh, I'm going to get those mailed out to you here tomorrow. Uh, so that way you can get your shirts, okay? And uh, for those who don't know, uh, we have shirts uh, 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 that are uh, 15 bucks, and it just shows Buck Now Fellowship on the front. Uh, maybe at the end of the service, I'll hold one up, uh, or at the beginning of the next service, I'll hold one up so that way you can see them. Or you can just go to the Facebook page, and it's on there. Uh, but it's a good witnessing tool and a, a good way to uh, encourage people and share the gospel. And so we have those. Uh, and also, um, uh, let's just continue to pray for one another. Uh, continue to pray for uh, uh, our young people. Uh, young people, we, uh, I just went to uh, Daytona. I had to go down to Daytona yesterday. My, co my little cousin graduated from Bethune-Cookman University. And uh, I, I was just saying that it's just so much that goes on. Uh, and it's really actually a blessing to see somebody graduate from college. Uh, uh, especially uh, uh, young people, uh, uh, because there's, there's so many different distractions, uh, and I was I was proud of her that she was able to do that. Um, so I had to spend some time with family uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, and so that that was that was good. But but let's just pray for our young people because there's uh, there's so much that distracts them from the goal at hand, uh, whether it be naturally uh, from a natural perspective doing things that's going to make them successful in this life. Uh, but also from a spiritual perspective, uh, uh, there's so many different distractions. So let's pray, pray for our young people. Uh, also, um, uh, uh, January 22nd is when we'll have Bible study. That's a Tuesday night rather than a Wednesday because January 23rd, that Wednesday, I have to go speak at a graduation. Okay, so uh, January. Oh, I'm sorry. May this month. I'm sorry. <laughs> no wonder everybody's looking at me crazy. <laughs> yeah. So January, uh, May this month. Okay, May 22nd, we'll have Bible study on that Tuesday night because May 23rd, I have to go speak at a graduation. Right. Right. So. Yeah, so May 22nd. Thank you so much. So, I was, uh, yeah, I was wondering why everybody's looking so crazy. Uh, yeah, the old people. Yeah. Hey, I'm a year older now, so. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, as of last week, I'm a year older now. So, uh, but but go ahead and turn to the book of James. Uh, just wanted to get those couple of announcements out of the way. And again, thank you all for being here. Those of you who are tuned in online, we thank you too. Uh, go ahead and turn to the book of James here. We were left off talking about um, uh, uh, faith without works is dead, and James asking the question, can faith save a man? Uh, saying, what does it profit a man? All right. And uh, if a man had not works, oh, if so faith, if it had not works, uh, is dead being alone, okay? And so we'll cover these verses here. Look at verse uh, 17. Uh, it's kind of where we left off. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. All right? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your truth. Uh, we thank you for your understanding. Father God, we ask right now that you just continue to bless us and strengthen us. Uh, uh, continue to build us up in our inner man, oh God. Continue to uh, uh, help us, oh God, as we walk this walk and uh, talk this talk. Father God, give us the strength, Father God, to uh, uh, fight the good fight of faith. Uh, we ask right now that you continue to keep us humble, oh God, uh, uh, allowing ourselves to be used by you, oh God, allowing the word to effectually work in us, oh God, for it is you uh, uh, who worketh in us to do of your good will and your good pleasure. Help us to deny ourselves that uh, so that you may increase in our life. Uh, we ask that you touch this study that this morning as we go through your word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Open up our eyes of understanding that we may gain the knowledge and wisdom of your word that you desire for us to have. Uh, it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 All right, so now, uh, uh, we dealt with last week uh, uh, how 
uh, they had to have these works, okay? They had to have the evidence of faith, okay? And understand faith can only be evidenced by work if the faith is actually required, okay? Because faith is not required, uh, because works is not required, okay, for us in this dispensation, uh, there need be no evidence of the faith, okay? Uh, that's the problem now with uh, uh, most religion uh, is that they are trying to see the evidence of your faith by what you do. But that is not the dispensation in which we live, okay? We don't live in a dispensation under a covenant or law in that we have to show God that we believe him, okay? Uh, God has already shown us, all right, what he's done for us. And all our job is to do is just have faith, which is to believe God at his word, all right? If it's one man that makes us a sinner, all right, and then there's one man that makes us righteous, then we believe that. And by his righteous work on the cross, not depending and leaning upon our own understanding and righteousness, it's by his faith he has saved us, okay? All right, and so understand, James is dealing with people, all right, who were under a covenant system with God, okay, who was under a, 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 a works performance-based short account system with God, which means that if they did this, God would bless them. If they didn't, God would curse them, okay? And we went through some examples of faith the last time, uh, talking about how they showed their faith by their works. Uh, we talked about uh, 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 Ananias and Sapphire, how they were killed because they lied uh, about that, because they, the scripture was said that they had to do what? Sell all they had. All right, so they can have everything in common, and then the apostles gave out as they saw need to, okay? Uh, and so because they did not perform the works, they actually died, okay? All right, so James is dealing with this, all right? And their faith has to be proven or evidenced by their works. If it's not, then it is not faith, as James is saying, okay? All right, it's not faith if it's not evidenced by works. That's why most people think today that either you're truly not saved or you can lose your salvation because your works don't show what you believe. Now, don't get me wrong. Because of who we are in Christ and what we believe, we ought to be careful to maintain good works. Not for righteousness sake, but for man. It's profitable unto men, okay? Our righteousness is imputed to us and it comes by way of Christ. All right, that is the righteousness that God seeks for today in this dispensation. Outside of that, he sought for the righteousness of each individual, all right, based upon the covenant that they were under. But we're not under any covenants of promise today. Uh huh. Does that tie into Romans 3.30? Yeah, by faith and through faith, absolutely. See, yeah. And we're justified. Yep, justified, all right? All right. And, and, and as a matter of fact, let's look at this. Go to Hebrews. Go, to, go back on to Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith, all right? Hebrews chapter 11, all right? And we're going to see that their faith had to be proven by their works. Now, Hebrews is a book written to who? Hebrew. The Hebrew people, okay? So the Hebrew people, all right, were under the covenants of, of promise back here and also even in Jesus' earthly ministry. So understand, in this covenant, they had to do what? Perform the what? Word. They just couldn't say they had faith. So that's why Hebrews, they point out all of the patriarchs, all right, of this Old Testament who had the faith and also had the evidence of faith by, by proving what? Words. All right? Look at uh, 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 Hebrews 11, verse 4. I call this the hall of faith, okay? Uh, and it's the hall of faith to Israel to show them that not only did these people have faith, but they did something, all right? Look at Hebrews 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel what? Offered, Offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet what? Speaking. So Cain was made righteous by what? By his work, by offering the more excellent what? Yeah. Sacrifice, okay? The more excellent gift, all right? And because of that, he was made righteous. Stop, Dylan. He was made righteous, okay? All right, look at verse uh, uh, 5. Oh, well, let's drop down to verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with what? Fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he commanded them the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by what? Amen. So uh, based on uh, Abel and Noah, their righteousness was based on their what? Faith. 
right? Their faith, but their what? Word, okay? So understand now, they had faith, but it, Noah couldn't just say, well, God, I believe you, I have faith, but I'm not going to build this ark. All right, because faith does, does if you have faith, the works shall what? Follow. If, and that's to particular sense, because if their works didn't follow, all right, they would not receive the gift or the promise, right? Once we believe in this dispensation, even if the works don't follow, we're saved because our salvation has nothing to do with our own works of righteousness, all right? It has nothing to do with our own works of righteousness, all right? Uh, 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 so, so, uh -huh. so how would you weigh works? Lord. I'm Lord. talking about as uh, the law, it pertains to law. How would you weigh works? Because the first thing that works do is make a man what? If I work, you owe me. Right, and their covenant relationship with God was based on if they did the proper work. But see, all work was equal? Was it equal or was there something that you could do that was better than somebody else's? What do you mean? They all had the same commandments. Okay, what I mean by that, works. Like in our... In the our works are defined by commandments. So they all had the same exact commandments. They all should have been doing the same exact things. Okay. Yeah, so there were, there were, uh, there were obviously some commandments that were greater than others because some of the commandments were punishable by death. Some weren't. Well, that's what I mean by yeah. the works itself. Did they have a platform where I mean by... This is counted as this, this is counted as that. Yes, they did. That's what I'm saying. It was based on the particular commandment. Because some commandments, adultery was punishable by death. All right? There were some other things, maybe stealing, or, or it, it, there were some things that were not punishable by death. All right? There, there was, they could be sacrificed, they could give, be given a sacrifice for it. All right? So there was levels and degrees of it based on the punishment. All right? So, but again, they all had the same commandment, though. They all had the same have commandments. It wouldn't have effect on their reward huh? as, as such, right? What's that? It wouldn't have an effect on their reward. They, their reward was salvation, okay? Which is why they had to continue to endure to the end. They haven't got their reward. Right, they haven't gotten it yet. That was their, that was their promise of that covenant, was the actual salvation. We receive salvation as the present possession. Our works now benefits us as the reward in heaven. All right, but again, our works today are not basically helping somebody across the street. Our works are still governed by the Holy Ghost, all right, because it's Christ that worketh what? In us to do of his good will and his good pleasure. So again, our works of righteousness is still done by God. It's just by way of us doing it through us, okay? The law works on them, on your flesh. The grace works in you, all right? That's the difference. If it wasn't set up that way, then there would be... Uh your works or good works will be predicated on man's morality. Mm -hmm. And God never intended it for it to be based on our morality. It depends on his good will. Right, right. His good pleasure. So he needed Israel to perform in such a way to reconcile the world or for them to see, be seen as the lights in the land. Mm -hmm. So like even tithing, like that was a part of one of their laws they had to do in the covenant. So it was a purpose behind it so that they would be seen as the light from the lightful land and the rest of the world will want to be a part of Israel. Right. We want to follow them. So now we should be trying to inspire people uh, to become a part of the body of Christ. How do we do that? By being able to impart the wisdom and the right doctrine to them. So that's what our work is today. Right. But right. either one, it's not about us. You know, our church gives to the homeless. Our church has all these youth uh, outreaches. That, that starts getting into man's morality. Right, right. You're right. And, and that's the problem with it is because most churches, uh, people go to a church to brag not on the doctrine that they receive, yeah. but the, the amenities of things that the church can provide for them. Yeah. You see that? And that's not the purpose of the church. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, to feed the homeless, yeah. uh, to have programs for youth and all of that. Uh, that's fine and dandy, okay? That, that is, I'm not saying that that's wrong or sinful. Yeah. What I'm saying is that those things when they're above the doctrine, uh, it's not God's order, yeah. okay? All of those things are just extra things uh, that the church can provide, but that's not what the church is supposed to be. The church is the pillar and the foundation of truth, mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's it. That's the purpose of the church. Now, what we do outside of that, we do even with Ronnie with G three, yeah. we do things for youth and all those things. So that it's not a bad, simple thing. Right. But in here, the priority of our church is right. the doctrine. Right. Okay, and that's what it should be for every church. All right, and then everything outside of that is just a is just a, a plus. True. Uh huh. So in the dispensation of the law, mm -hmm. their works was basically keeping the law. Right, the commandments. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's that yeah. leads to a totally different sideline as ours, where some people think that if I do this here, I'm rewarded with a bigger house. Or right. Right. It, it has nothing to. But but for them, it was. It was. Yeah. But because Deuteronomy 28, what we read Wednesday night, uh, uh, it was based on how they kept the commandments. God will be. They would yes. be blessed going in. Blessed when right. they come out you know, have the land and all of these different things, they would have those things because that was a promise to them under that covenant. We're not under those covenant promises uh, 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 or covenants of promise to where we receive something if we do something right. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, I, I, was, I was really, I was going to address what Billy had asked earlier, mm -hmm. but I guess you, you got it straight or whatever. But what I was thinking you was trying to see were like, by God, when you, God told Noah to build an ark, but he told Abel to give a, a good, you yeah, know, that he gave a, a good sacrifice. So I thought you were wondering Which if by great. him doing the ark was his that reward greater, greater right. than, than Abel. No, 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 no. That sounds about right, though. That's a good question. No, but that's not, but that's not the case because God judges, I, God judges them based on their instructions to them. Just, Just because the ark seems so much greater and bigger, yeah. Then the sacrifice to God, the sacrifice was huge. Yeah. That's why Cain and Abel. That's why Abel uh, 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 was, was killed because of how big God did. God honored the sacrifice. Yeah. Cain didn't see that. Cain saw it as that big, big enough to kill his own brother. Mm -hmm. You see that? So the ark for Noah was big to him because that's what, what were God's instructions to him. Does not minimize the offering of the sacrifice because it was smaller. And what we deemed to be small. So all that junk was pass fail though, back then. Right, exactly. It was just pass fail. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's the good. Yeah, it was pass. Either you pass it or you fail. Yeah, that was it. Oh, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, also in, in, in Romans nine, where he speaks about um, uh, like seeking the law by faith as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. You know, that's important too because right. it wasn't just doing the works, it's, you know, it had you to do it by faith. by faith. Right, right. And then the works follow after right. that. Right. So, as, as it was speaking about how some of them was not a part of, did not attain righteousness uh -huh. because they were so caught up in their flesh. And, right. You know, boast like most people today. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. doing this, I'm feeding the homeless, yeah. but at the end of the day, like. You have no faith. You have no faith. Right, you know? absolutely. So, which is why James also says uh, uh, in James chapter 2, uh, uh, he says, Yeah, man, say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see that? Uh, because, again, there are a lot of people that were doing things, but it wasn't by faith. So he, James is saying, I'm going to show you that I have faith because of what I do. All right? Today for us, we show we have faith because of what we believe, not because of what we do. You see that? There's a, that's the difference and the dispensations. The covenant agreement with God uh, uh, required certain works, okay? Uh, our uh, uh, relationship with God based on just pure grace is not of works lest any man should boast. You see that? It's got to be some kind of a hierarchy. Uh, a hierarchy? Uh -huh. yeah, in, a, in the sense of the, the 12 are going to be ahead of the 12 tribes. Uh -huh. And so, that's simply because they did what? Simply because God chose them. Right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, and they did what they were supposed to do uh -huh. uh, according to the instructions God gave them. Mm -hmm. So there, that was our, they got the highest reward from all from everybody. So there's got to be some kind of hard to judge the twelve done. tribes. But but there, it's not that they did something so much greater than somebody else. God just chose them because that's what He wanted to do. They didn't do anything so much greater than somebody else. As a matter of fact, most of them. You got Judas denied, denied Christ. Peter denied Christ. Yep. So they didn't do anything any greater than anybody else. Just like Israel. Like Noah's 
just like Israel as a nation didn't do anything greater than any other than anybody else. That's yeah. who just God who God chose. And, so that, and that's what God decided. He right. Said they're going to be ahead of right. And whatever Noah ends up being. Right. 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 Yeah. And, th and that then that's the thing. That's why it's not necessarily a measure of this person's work was greater than this person's work. Mm. Because again, God sees it based on the knowledge you have. Yeah. All right. If the, if if you have a certain knowledge of the word and you don't obey it, but I only have a small knowledge of the word, God is only going to hold you accountable to what you know. Well, back to the past trail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it yeah. wasn't um Because I mean, God can't I'm sorry, God can't punish you for something that you didn't know or didn't have a right a, a way of knowing. Now that's a difference now because we have the word and some people just reject it. That's different. But I'm talking about to especially back then there was no written word for these people. They had to hear from the prophets and those things. And so there were some people that the word had not gotten to yet. God wasn't going to judge them on the word if it had not gotten to them yet. Yeah. So now, but yeah. now it's yeah, it's been given to everybody at this point. Yeah. So there's no excuse in that regard. But back then, we were talking about back then, all right, the level of uh, uh, faith was based on what God instructed you at that time. All right, now, does it minimize anything over here? Uh, because the 12 are no greater than Noah. Yeah. Simply because they're judging the 12 tribes, that's just God chose them to do that. They, they were just obedient to the instructions at that time. That's it. Yeah. Okay, well, we was talking a second ago, since we already had Noah, no less. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew 11, what you call that hall of faith? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on, on, on verse 7, it says, By faith Noah was warned of God things not seen yet, mm -hmm. moved with fear. Was it because of fear that he acted, or was it because Yeah, God of faith? always dealt with man based on fear. God always dealt with man back this time based on fear. It was the fear of God that motivated them here. Today, it's the love of God that motivates us today. You see that? And that was the key. Because even with Ananias and Sapphire, it said that, uh, with Ananias and Sapphire, it said that the it, fear came upon all the world when they had lied to the Holy Ghost and they died. Because that was their motivation. Because again, it was fear of not doing what the covenant, what they were supposed to do under that covenant. Today, we're not under any covenant. God is just offering grace and peace today. So it's the love of God that motivates us. Based on what Christ has already done, we do what we should do because he's already done. What he, the motivation is different, right? Because the instruction or doctrine is different. Uh-huh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still dealing with that. Um, level. Level. Um, that, like, Abel, you know, and again, I, you made it even clearer about the fear. Mm -hmm. He feared God to the point that I'm going to give God the best I have. Right, right. You know, but then his brother came. He was like, well, you know, he God. He don't need, you know, mm -hmm. I'll just give him whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. not, and uh, it don't matter. And I do remember when Jesus gave him that prayer about the woman with the, the might. You know, mm -hmm. that he says, you know, a lot of them gave, but they, they didn't count it for their works because right. they were given to be seen. Right, right. And then she gave out of her heart. So it's the motivation. All right? and, that, and again, it's the motivation. Uh, a lot of people come to church uh, uh, to be seen, okay? Uh, uh, I, I was just at the, uh, uh, the graduation that I was at yesterday. I was telling my mom, uh, uh, people do things just to be seen. Uh, we were looking at some of the, the wardrobes and, and, and some of the uh, uh, the hairstyles and some of the things. And I say people do stuff just to be seen. Uh, uh, and it's the same way even in church. Most people do things just to be seen. All right? and, it, and again, it's the intent of the heart of the motivation behind what you do. Just like what Jesus says in that time, uh, uh, there will be people performing miracles in my name. All right? It's not that the miracles won't be performed. They will be performed, but it's the heart of the motivation of the people performing. Just like Simon the Sorcerer that we read about in Acts 8. All right? Well, he wanted to buy the gift. Okay? All right? And that, because once he saw it, he thought it was for sale. He, but, but remember now, he had what? Believed and was baptized first. All right? So his intent at that time was good, but then it creeped in on him because now he feel like, well, shoot, I want to buy this. So now it was the intent and the motivation of it, okay? All right, so 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 understand that's what it's dealing with. It's not, there was levels of, of types of things because they, and God talks about there were seven uh, abominations to him, 
which he named out that were above any other thing, okay? All right, so back then, because of the covenants uh, 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 that God had them under, there was different things for different di different prices for different things. Uh, there was a hierarchy of it, okay? And even when Jesus talked about it in Matthew 23, 23, he says, uh, uh, for ye tithe and anise and cumin, but yet you left the, the, the things undone, the more weightier matters undone. So there were some things that were more weightier than others, all right? All right, and so there was a level of what is greater than others. And the, and the, the uh, I guess the problem with that is now today, people are still trying to figure out what constitutes my work to be greater than yours. Well, because you didn't come to church in the last four weeks and I came all the time, you see that that means, you know, that I'm above you to some degree. And that's that's the wrong way of thinking, okay? Yeah. All right? <laughs> Even how people get dressed, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, because... You know me, I don't really like dressing up. So. <laughs> a lot of times, people are like, you go to church? Hey, what church you going to? Like, they letting you in there like that? Yeah. Hat to the back, you know? Yeah. And I just be thinking, like, man, that... It's way different. But it's true, but it happened this morning, to be honest with you. And it was like, you know, it's just, it's, it's just the mindset of... You thinking you like you said you really want to be seen. Yeah, yeah you know you yeah. want to be a part. Everybody say, "Oh man, I like that suit. Well, I like your dress. That yeah, you got yeah, on." Yeah, yeah. But none of that means anything to God. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know? It doesn't. And, and, and the the thing about it, I tell you this all the time. A lot of times, I really want to come in here in some basketball shorts and some flip flops and be comfortable. Okay, uh, 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 but. Because how people may view that, I don't want to cause right. a stumbling block for some people, right. okay? Right. Uh, so because of how people view the leaders of the church and how they ought to dress, again, it has nothing to do with nothing, okay? <laughs> if I come in here in flip-flops and I'm teaching the right word of God, that, it doesn't even matter, all right? But because of people, all right, and uh, uh, the weaker brother, as Paul calls them in uh, Romans 13, uh, 14, the weaker brother, okay, we, we, we don't want to cause a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in our brother's way. All right, so if I come dressed like that, it may cause a problem to some. All right, now, again, like you said, whether, whatever, what you have on, as long as you're decently dressed, okay, it doesn't matter what you have on. None of that matters, but we, the church has become so accustomed to the world. Because in the world, you got certain leaders or certain people that have, that wear certain things, all right, as opposed to everybody else. So the church, all the pastors, and you got to wear all this stuff. I just wore this suit because I just felt like wearing it this morning. I don't, I don't really like to wear suits and be all uptight like this anyway. And then especially this morning when the air is still broke, it's hot in here, okay? <laughs> so, 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 but just understand, you know, uh, uh, I, I just felt like wearing it. But a lot of times I just, the clothing doesn't matter. But as Paul said, he became all things to all men that he might gain some okay so when I dress like this when I'm up here it's not because I have to but it's because of those who are weaker in the faith mm -hmm. all right two part question uh-huh first question don't you think that dress goes back to the Levites having to wear a certain mm -hmm. dress and, uh, yep. Uh, yeah, because they had to wear the e pods and all of those different types of uh, uh, certain clothing that God specified that they had to wear uh, although they're not following it to the T but yes that is Accurate, and a lot of it is, 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 is especially at the church today, is based on the Roman Catholicism uh, and how they dress. And we follow, you know, we, we as in most religions follow that. I know uh, the last organization I was in, they had the collars and everything, they looked just like the Pope. Okay, so so that's where they get that from. Huh? And the second part of the question is about the works part, mm -hmm. as opposed to a parable of a field where the worker came in in the morning, mm -hmm. worked all day, and then he hired somebody who worked half the day maybe, and he right. got exactly the same reward. Right, right, right. So that's telling me in a sense that it's not what the reward right. is. Right, it's based uh, on the instruction. Now, the were you obedient or not? Uh, if you were obedient, and again, with them, it required their obedience. Their faith required their obedience of works. All right, if the works was not evidence or proven, then they had no faith. You see that? Look at Hebrews 11 here. Look at verse 8. All of these people in verse uh, chapter 11 are going to have faith first, by faith, by faith, by faith. And then they're also going to do something behind what they're believing. Because if they didn't, it was eternal consequences for them. All right? Well, if we have faith and we don't do it, it's just not an eternal consequence because we're already sealed unto the day of promise. Okay? 
However, because of what we are in Christ and who we are, we ought to be careful to maintain good works because it's profitable unto men. All right, there's a difference in the doctrines. Our doing of good works is not for the uh, benefit of receiving something. Uh, it's for the benefit of the person who needs to receive the gospel. All right. All right. Look at Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing what? Whether he went. That's why some people say today, uh, 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 so you just have to trust the voice of God. All right, and quit that job and go and do and get your own business. You got to step out on faith. Now that has nothing to do with what Abraham was doing. All right, because understand, it's not talking about a job or a anything like that. But people will make these statements, use a verse in the Bible, and say you got to just step out on faith. And then they say you got to call those things as not as though they were. Yeah, that's it. But if you look at that scripture in Romans 11. God was the only one that was able to call something that was not as though it was. Not you as an individual. There was nobody in scripture that was able to call something that was not as though it were. That's, it says God did that to Abraham. Abraham and Sarah, Sarah was laughing at God. Yeah. But God saw because he could see the end before the beginning that they would have a child of promise. You see that? So when people say these things, they use these scriptures it was just, just like uh, uh, when I was at the graduation uh, uh, yesterday, they had a bunch of reverends in, on the program doing the, the, uh, uh, the prayer. They had a reverend doing something. I'm thinking reverend, according to Psalms 119, is God's name. The only name that, 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 that it says holy and reverend is his name. So to use reverend in your title is absolutely in opposition to God. You see that? And I was just thinking about the, this minister and his wife in the church mm -hmm. that um, in, in a church that we know of that the wife got up and said God told me to quit my job mm -hmm. and then he came back and said God told him the same thing see God is not a God of confusion mm -hmm. but it's funny how he told both of them to quit their job mm -hmm. but they both have you know bills and right. you know some people just do these, I, I'm not sure why they do those things, yeah. but he, he well, said God said it and she said God said it. Well, God, it. Well, 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 God uh, the thing about it is that people think God yes. is a, people don't understand that God is a spirit. They People think they feel God. That That's the thing, because I feel like this is God pushing me in this direction. No, that's your own conscience and want to pushing you in that direction. It has nothing to do with God, okay? Uh, especially when it comes to quitting the job or getting the job, okay, has nothing to do with anything, okay, so so understand, <clears throat> when it comes to these things, people say these things, and they're using these types of verses right here, okay, and, and it, it's not, has, has nothing to do, all right, with anything for anybody today especially, all right, look at verse uh, eight, uh, 17, Hebrews 11, verse 17, Hebrews 11, verse 17, By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that uh, had received the promises offered up his only what? Begotten son, okay? All right, now, when we're going to go through this because James is going to use Abraham, all right, and we're going to go through this comparison in just a second because Paul uses Abraham also, all right? And they're both going to prove their points accurately because that's it's God's word all of it is true uh, however if you don't rightly divide it there's going to be a contradiction and problem in there and we'll see that in just a second drop down to verse 20 of Hebrews 11 by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come all right so again they're doing something because it's by faith verse 22 by faith Joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and did what gave commandment concerning his what? Oh, no. All right, this, this was done by faith. Verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he did what? Forsook, Forsook Egypt. Egypt. Okay, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is what? Invisible. Invisible. 
Okay, so understand all of the things and the glory that he had in Egypt, because of faith, he forsook that. You see that? So by faith, their works had to, their faith had to be evidenced or proven by their work. If they did not have their work, then their faith was void. Alright? Totally different from anybody today. Uh-huh. You know what I'm gonna say, right? What's that? And then we look at verses 11 and 28, and it says, through faith. Uh-huh. Mm, it says, by faith. Through faith, he kept the Passover. All right. And also, verse 11. Uh-huh. Through faith, also, Sarah. So, it seems like they're using it inter interchangeably. Yeah, uh-huh. Right. Now, now, again, now, through faith, also, even Sarah herself received uh, uh, strength to conceive seed. Because remember now, when Sarah was able to do this, it wasn't by her own doing. That's why it was through faith. It was God's doing in her on her behalf at that point. You see that? That's why it says through faith. Because there are some things, just like take for instance Peter, when Jesus asked him, Who do men say that I am? It wasn't by his faith he was able to say who Jesus was. It was through because he says God had revealed that unto you. So anytime God does it, it's always through what? Faith. faith. Okay, so that's the difference here. Alright? All right, now, look at, uh, go to Hebrews uh, 11, 39. Now, all of these people, uh-huh. Quick question, is through faith, is that's like kind of supernatural? Yeah, to some degree, yeah, to some degree, because it's God's doing, uh, uh, not our own. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Hebrews 11, 39. And these all, having obtained a good report through what? Faith. Receive what? Not, not the promise. promise. Not the promise. You see that? So their, their faith had to be evidenced by their works in order to continue to endure that they may receive a what? Promise. All right? Is that similar to the through faith? <clears throat> Is that similar to when the baptism, when it said we baptized through Christ? Right, absolutely, absolutely, because it's uh, uh, baptized uh, uh, into Christ's body, okay? Uh, baptized by the Spirit into Christ's body, okay? Uh, which, again, has nothing to do with... Uh, 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 natural. Okay, that's all spiritual. First of all, to be baptized by the Spirit is spiritual, and then to be baptized into Christ's body, okay, cannot be done naturally. All right, that is a spiritual thing. All right, I had a uh, brother that keeps emailing me about baptism, uh, and he says all baptisms are done by the Spirit. And I said, well, the whole Bible is written by the Spirit. You're right. I said, but when it says, Matthew 3 and 11, John says, I indeed baptize you into water, that's not the Spirit, that is John. No. I means I, okay? That is John baptizing, okay, in accordance to his knowledge of truth. He was the one that was supposed to be the forerunner, baptizing them with water. That's John doing that. That's not the Spirit doing that, all right? Because, again, uh, all three are one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost are one. But God the Son is not God the Holy Ghost. God the Holy Ghost is not God the Son. All right? They're three distinct persons. God the Father, God the Son. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost are God the Father, but they are not each other. That's why Jesus said the Holy Ghost cannot come until I, what, leave. Because although they're one, they're not the actually uh, uh, same in as, as far as work, operation. right? As far as operation, because Jesus is not the Holy Ghost. Jesus is God, and he's Jesus, but he is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not Jesus, although the Holy Ghost is God. Mm -hmm. You see that? And so, so when, you, when it says that, people don't understand that. And so, uh, again, that, that, that baptism is when the baptizer, okay, is different. And the element of the baptize, baptism is different, all right? It, then it has to be different. If one person is baptizing, which is John the Baptist, and he's baptizing with water, all right? And we're to, uh, the, then it talks about 1 Corinthians 12, 13, but we're baptized by one spirit into the body, all right? The, not only is the baptizer different, but the element is different. Yeah. We're baptized into Christ's body. They're baptized through the water. You see that? So that means it has to be a different baptism. It can't be the same. If it was the same, it would use the same words. And Jesus baptized into the Holy Spirit. Huh? And Jesus, Jesus baptized them with the Holy with, Ghost. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Uh -huh. um, my verse 39 again. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, they could not receive a good report if it was by faith. It had to be through faith. Right, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this water baptism. 
Uh-huh. Since some water baptizes, that make me a priest? Now that make you anything. No, <laughs> See, that's what the they, they were baptized for, right? For, for what? Recognize that they. No, to, it was just to, to identify them as bringing forth meat, fruit, uh, the fruit meat for repentance. So the they, baptism was to uh, to show or identify them as being repentant that Jesus is who He said He was. That's why when the Pharisees came to Him, He was like, "Who had warned you, old generation of vipers?" Right? Because they were not meet for baptism because they didn't believe that Christ was the Messiah. So why was Christ baptized then? To fulfill all righteousness. It's uh-huh. a different. Right, right. His, see that, and that's, that's the thing. The people, thing. people follow Jesus in baptism, but your water baptism does not symbolize what His symbolizes. Right. All right. But now, baptism was for the washing and the cleansing for the water to be identified as the uh, 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 belief in the Son of God. Now, the water baptism did not actually take away their sin. Yeah. No. All right. They, but everybody who was sinful had to be water baptized in this program. As evidence, okay, all right, of showing a, 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 a mindset of repentant of who Jesus was. Now, Jesus had no sin, so he wasn't being baptized for sin. He was being baptized to fulfill all righteousness, okay? Because if he's the high priest, okay, and all the priests had to be washed according to Exodus 29, all right, then that means Jesus had to follow suit. But people fail to understand in Luke, uh, uh, Luke chapter 12 that Jesus talks about another baptism that he has to be baptized with. That wasn't water. That was death. All right? And so now we're baptized into Christ's death. That can't be physical. You can't get washed or dunked in water and have that to happen. Uh-huh. So what we're really saying is the, the baptism of the Levites themselves was to show that they were priests. Right, but the whole nation. Israel was supposed to be a nation of priests. priests. That's right. what I'm right. saying. So there are different types of baptism. Well, yeah, yeah, yes, I, what, yeah, yes, 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 all saying. over the Bible. Absolutely. So just because you want to baptize it, what reason? Right, right. Uh, and again, if somebody gets water baptized and they have no knowledge of truth, then God bless them. All right? The point is now that you, if you have truth, because people ask me all the time, would I water baptize somebody? No, I wouldn't. Okay, uh, I would tell them as to why I'm not doing it and what water baptism actually means. Because most people who actually want to get water baptized have no knowledge of truth. They're just doing that because that's what it's been taught. That if I'm baptized and woo, I'm gonna have some new life. New man. Right. I, I was watching a video. Uh, somebody sent me of uh, some former NFL players. Uh, who went over to Jer- Israel, to Jerusalem, to get washed in the Jordan River. All right, uh, I guess that's a great, you know, uh, uh, one of the guys I actually played with, uh, it was a great, uh, uh, I guess, something to experience. I guess it's a great experience, but your experience, un- uh, 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 contrary to popular belief, has nothing to do with your salvation, with God, or anything. What you experience has nothing to do with, 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 with the Spirit. Okay, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right, so just having an experience of it, this is what Jesus was. Uh, that might do something to stimulate you emotionally, okay, and which is fine. There's nothing sinful about it. That's fine if you want to do that. But there's, there, there's no truth in that. There's no benefit in doing that other than uh, uh, fleshly stimulation. There's no spiritual benefit in going over to Israel to get water baptized in the Jordan River because that's what Christ did it. There's no spiritual benefit to that at all. You see that? Uh, so, 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 but, but people do these things, and you, you know, you saw the people coming up out of the water, woo! You know, as, you know, as if it's provided something new. Uh, 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 and, and, and again, the only thing that's new or provides you with a new outlook or perspective is a renewing and transformation of the mind not a dunking in water, okay? Because if you get dunked in water but have the same mentality, you're gonna do what you've always done because the mind is what controls everything. You see that? So there's no real benefit of getting dunked as if it's some type of new life opportunity simply because it, without the change of the mind, there can be nothing new, right? That's why Paul says in Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to this world, be transformed by the renewing of the mind, which is a constant process. All right. Look at Hebrews 11. All right. Look at uh, uh, no, no. Go back to James 2. We we finished 11 and 39. Go back to James chapter 2. Hebrews 
Hebrews, uh, I'm sorry, James chapter 2, verse 18. Yea, man say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without my, thy works, and I will show thee my faith, what? By my works, okay? So again, their, their faith had to be evidenced or proved by works, all right? If you live in a dispensation where works are not required as evidence, as we do today, then you can't give any works that are, are beneficial for your righteousness, which most people are trying to do today. You see that? Look at James chapter 2, look at verse tw uh, 19. Thou believest that there is what? One God, thou what? Does well. Doest well. The devils also what? Believe. And do what? Tremble. And tremble. Now, what does this mean? There's nothing. Huh? You need no credit for that. Yeah. Because you believe God, every, every, everything does. You have the faith, but you know, it's not following the word. Everybody believe that's not enough just to believe it. Okay, now, in, in, in context of what we're reading, let's go back up to verse 14. The last part of verse 14 says what? Can faith what? Can faith save him? That's the issue. So let's go back to verse 19. Because most people will say, well, shoot, I believe in that there is one God. Now, watch this. I'm going to break this down here, and this is going to be good. Watch this. Thou believest that there is what? One God. One God, thou doest what? Well. You're doing well if you believe that there's one God. Now, let me ask this without giving away the answer. What's so significant about believing that there is one God? Because some believe there is no God. Faith. Okay, some believe that there's no God. Well, but time, in context, huh? At that time, they were believing that there was a lot of God. They, they, they had a lot of idols. Okay, okay. So when you narrow it down and you get to the point where you believe it's one God, you're doing well relative to what everybody else was doing at the time. Okay. But now how do you get to that? Okay, so now, in, 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 in regards, though, what is one, when it says that there is one God, what is what is, what is it saying? So it's talking about the God here. The God. So now, what's significant about the God here? That they're all one. Okay. Jesus Christ. All right. And, and, and in regards to Scripture, what's the significance about the God here? It's three and one. It's all. It's just but one. The God oh, you're talking about it's the composition of man? No, no, not not just that. We were just talking about baptism. Oh, you have to be baptized in the name of the uh, Father, Father, Son, and the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. But then in, in, in Acts 2, Peter baptized in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So what's the significance of the Godhead? So you, you, you acknowledge him as all, as God. God. Okay, so what, but the, the, signi the si but the significance of that because, is... Because they didn't believe that he was a son. Okay. So it shows that... So, so who would have had privilege to knowing who the Godhead was? Israel. That's the key. That's the significant. That's why James is saying this. Because remember, who is his audience? Israel. So when he says, "Thou believest that there is one God," the privilege of the Israelites was to know that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or the Godhead, was what one. The Gentile nations would not have known that. So when they were to go out and baptize in Matthew 28, as Jesus was telling them, they would have baptized in the name of the what? Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in order to teach the what? The Godhead. So the question is, what's the significance to the audience? Yes, right, which, right. but had I said that, it would have gave, gave it away. That's why I said, what's the, because if I said audience, then you would have known it was Israel, okay? Uh, that, but, but you're absolutely right. That would be the, 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 the logical question there. It is based on the audience, what is the significance of the Godhead? Because the Gentile would not know anything about it. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when people say that, that was it. That was an it privilege unto Israel. You see that? Now, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'll show you this. So, 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 when, so when, when James is talking about uh, uh, if thou believest, thou doest well, but all the devils believe also. But whether the uh, word the word El mean that they use the Hebrew word doesn't it mean plural for God? Uh huh. El Yeah. He and has many names. Word, so they already knew. Right. And, and again, the term Elohim 
Did Gentile wouldn't have known what that was? No, they were. Right, right. It was a Hebrew term. What were you saying, Dennis, before? I was going to say Genesis 126. It's a Greek chapter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Look at Deuteronomy 6. Uh, no, not 6. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and look at verse 35. Deuteronomy 4 verse 35. Unto thee, all right, it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is what? God. There is none else, what? Beside him. Beside him. Now, who is thee here? Israel. Israel. All right, so now, so understand that it was only given to them, it was showed to them that they would know that the Lord, he is what? God. Uh -huh. All right, it was showed to them. Go over to Deuteronomy 6. The great commandment that was only given to Israel. Because Psalms 1, uh, 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 47, verse 19 and 20 talks about how God gave his statutes to no other nation other than Israel. All right? So they would have known this great commandment, okay? And they would have known about the Godhead that there is only one God. And as James is talking about, if they believed in that, thou what? Do as well. But it's not enough in the context of what James is talking about because if you don't have works to, comp to, to go along with your faith, then faith is what? Dead. You see that? So understand that they could not only just believe in the Godhead because it was shown unto them who he was, all right? But they also had to have the evidence of that faith and belief by their what? Works. Not the same thing for us today, all right? Look at Deuteronomy 6 and look at verse 4. Do we have it? Yes, sir. All right. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one what? Lord. See, so this is the commandment that was only given to who? Israel. So they would have known because the same audience that James is talking to is what? Israel. So they would have known. So he's in the context of talking about faith without works being dead. He's saying if you believe that there's one God, you're doing well because that was shown to you way over here. But the devils also believe and tremble. So it's not, it was not enough just to believe in God because God showed it to them, but their faith had to be, their faith, their faith had to be evidenced by their what? Words. Look at verse 5 of Deuteronomy 6. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy what? Might. And with all thy might. All right. Now, go to Luke chapter 4. Uh -huh. Question, like you said, they would have known, but according to what we see in Scripture, Israel's enemies knew their God. Yes, based on based on what? Fear. Fear, Fear. based on the work that was done. Absolutely. Man. Based on the work that was done. That's why Jesus talks, uh, God talks about in Ezekiel, uh, uh, you have blasphemed my name among the heathen yep. or among the nations, and I will do something to you in order to glorify my name. Mm -hmm. And which, what, what is that thing he will do to them or for them? Bondage. Huh? No, what is that thing he'll do to glorify his name among the heathens in which Israel has blasphemed? He's going to offer them what? Grace. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. In yeah. what time? Out here? Yeah. Salvation. By way of what? By way of putting it in their hearts. Or which is called a what? Covenant. A covenant. Okay, so in Ezekiel 36, understand that Jesus says, you have blasphemed my name among the nations, I will give to you a new covenant, and when I will give you a, 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 a clean, a, 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 take away your stony heart of flesh and give you a new heart, put my commandments into you, it calls you to walk in my statutes, all right, and then my name will be glorified among the heathen, which it will. Yes. All right, so just like God over here would do things, okay, with just a David in a slingshot. Right. Yes. All right. Uh, 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 with uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, the army, would, uh, what's that, Gideon, we were talking about, uh, uh, where the army was too big. Yeah. And God said, no, we, I don't need all of them people. Just cut it down some. All right, and then I'll, I'll destroy them with just this many. Yeah. All right, that's showing the power of God. Right. So God had to show these people these types of miracle signs and wonders because otherwise they would not what? Believe. believe. And if they didn't believe on God or have faith, they definitely, most definitely would not do the works required. Yeah. You see that? So all of this stuff for them ties in together. They were a sign people. They needed the signs, miracles, and wonders in order to have the faith. And then if they had the faith, now they had to be evidenced by what they did. Yeah. All right? Has nothing to do with anybody today. All right? Look at uh, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter number 4, let's start at verse 31. Luke 4 verse 31. Do we have it? Amen. Yeah. All right, and came down to Capernaum. This is talking about Jesus here. A city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath days, all right, and they were what? Astonished. At his what? Astonished. Now, what doctrine was he teaching that they were so astonished about? Was it grace? No. Huh? No. See, all right, now watch this now. So, Jesus, when he taught, he was not teaching, okay, uh, 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 faith by grace through me, because he was still there. He was teaching them to just believe in who he was. Because that was the requirement at that time. So the doctrine that he was teaching, was, which is Matthew 23 tells us, go and do to them that sit in the seat of Moses instructs you to do. Mm -hmm. And those that sit in the seat of Moses were instructing them to do the what? Law. Law. You see that? So that they were astonished at this doctrine, okay? For his word was with what? How? And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, let us what? Alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of what? Amen. See, so when James says that to believe that there is one God, thou doest well, but guess what? Who else believes? The the de they knew exactly who he was. They're, they're looking like, well, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of what? God. The they devils were, even know they this. They were very aware. Right, they were very aware. Specifically knew exactly who he was. So, so James is saying, just to believe that there is one God, thou doest well. But if that's all you have is just that belief, even the devils believe that. Yeah. So what's the difference in the devils that have faith and them? Word. Say the devil. Word. Faith. Uh, they believe who he was. They believe. They believe. That's faith. Uh, well, they believe who he was. So what's what's the difference there? It works. Because the devils believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. Works. What they they, they were not going to do the work meet for repentance. All right. Let's go to uh where are we at Luke. Go back one to Mark. Chapter one. No, no, let, let, let's go to this one first. Go back to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter number 8. All right. Matthew chapter number 8. Let's look at verse 20. Eight. We have it? Yes. All right, look at this. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the uh, Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear, so that no man might pass by that way. 
And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us, what? Before the time. Before the time. Mm -hmm. Before the time. So now, why did the devil and his angels go to hell? Because they, uh, they, they turned against God. Because they, uh, they had they 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 iniquity in his heart. Power. They okay. Disobedience. Disobedience. Okay, so now, faith had to have or required their what? Right. Obedience, yeah. or their works, okay? Obedience to their works. Now, the devils and his angels are not going to hell because they don't believe. Uh -huh. the works. Uh -huh. You see that? Now, if any man goes to, to hell today, it's based because he what? Don't believe. Does not believe. Unbelief. Yeah. The difference in the dispensation. Yeah. With them, it was not just to have belief, but you actually had to what? Okay. Have the evidence of, of obedience of what? Words. Yeah. Go to Matthew 20, uh... Uh, uh, five. Go ahead. You got people that believe in, if, for example, if you kill somebody, you're going to go to prison. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean that they are willing to obey that law. Mm -hmm. Which separates them to say, Good I point. know if I, if I get caught, I'm going to prison for life. Good point. However, but I, they don't obey a law, the, the law enough, but they go out and commit murder. Uh -huh. You know, so now they're thrown away. And just like the devil, like, right, right, right. I, 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 I honor, I believe I don't honor the law. There you go, there you go. And that's the difference. The devil and his angels are not going to hell because of faith. They believe in who God is. They're going to hell because of their works. That's why James is specifically talking to them about faith and works. Uh -huh. Faith without works is dead. dead. There you go. That proves it right there. Absolutely. Because they have faith. That's why James is telling you. They have, the devils have faith. They believe, but they don't have the what? Evidence of the what? Words. Look at Matthew 25, verse 41. Is that 25, yes. Matthew 25, verse 41. Uh, look at verse 40. Look at Matthew uh, 25, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have what? So he's talking about what? They're what? Worse. Look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting for fire, prepare for the devil and his angels, for this is the reason for further explanation, for I was unhungered and ye gave me what? No I was thirsty and you gave me what? No drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and yet you visited me what? Nah. nah. So guess what? They had faith but they didn't have any works and therefore they were going to be thrown into hell with the devil and his angels. Wow. See this is important now to understand because most religious people today are using this same doctrine to condemn people in the age of grace. But in actuality, the work that is required for this, this dispensation has already been done on the cross. Yes, Amen. Amen. You see that? And we're justified by simple belief in that finished work. That is the requirement today. The only work required for this dispensation is Christ on the cross. Amen. Faith is the only thing that you can do without doing nothing. Yes, sir. You see that? And so understand, uh, and we'll, we'll get down to this. We'll close this session. We'll pick it back up in a minute. All right, now, but understand that Jesus understood, okay, what, uh, they understood who Jesus was. They, they believed in him. And they even trembled. But they did not do the works. That's the difference in that dispensation. All right? And, you know, we get, you get, you know, they bring back the memory of something. That, you know, you get these young people who are movie stars or whatever, singers and stuff, and they say, I believe in God, I, I believe yeah. in Jesus. Uh -huh. and you ain't said nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because you just know, to say that you do that, right. that's, well, that doesn't prove anything. That's why, even in this dispensation, our, our faith or our salvation is not evidenced by works. It's evidenced by what we say. That's why to understand if a person is saved or not today, we can't tell by their works as in that dispensation that James is talking about. But we, but we can tell by what they say. Just because everybody says, I thank God and thank Jesus, 
Mm -hmm. All right. Doesn't mean that they believe in the gospel of the grace of God. Yeah. That's the difference, okay? Because a lot of people who are in church and grew up in church are not saved. Because they're believing and trusting in their own works, right, to obtain this salvation. <laughs> Although they holler the blood and grace and God and Jesus, does not believe that they're trusting those things, all right, for the purpose of salvation. Something you just said, mm -hmm. I have been, well, I done read this probably a thousand times and I just noticed it just now. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you said, they said before the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So did they have to know prophecy? Oh, you better believe they knew it. They understood. Now, that's why, that's important. It says before the time. Yeah. They understood there was time left for them to do whatever they needed to do. Mm -hmm. So he said before the time. Because remember now, when they we're going to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a secret. Right. See, the devil knew that. The problem was that if they, they had not known, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, they had not known. For if they had known, they would not have what? Crucified the Lord of glory. So by the devil knowing that he was going to kill Jesus, okay, he was thinking that he got him now. Yeah. You see that? But as the Bible says, God caught him in his craftiness mm -hmm. and make an open shame of him. You see that? And so because of that, they thought, that, well, this is before the time. Now, y'all, you going to destroy us before the time? You see that? Because even they understand who God is and that he does things decently and in order. You see that they just didn't know that he had a secret plan. You see that? That's the thing. All right. Um, so I'm thinking the time is out there in Revelation. I was, I was reading about that the other day. Mm -hmm. um, but are the one-third of the one third of the angels sealed? They, they're sealed in that city, mm -hmm. city correct? Mm -hmm. From way back mm -hmm. when they did it, mm -hmm. in, like before they was before the serpent was sent down to the garden, yep. Yep. they sealed, right? Uh -huh. So it's not no new angels, right? No, 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 no. So, but mankind is not sealed yet, right? In their decision, right? So and I, that's why hell had enlarged itself. So I was reading out there in Revelation where like it's gonna be the two witnesses, uh -huh. the two prophets, uh -huh. and he gonna be tormenting them, right? With right. their words, right? Right. right. And then when they get killed, they, when those two prophets get killed, mm -hmm. they're going to be passing gifts, like celebrating. Right, yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Like, yeah, they're leaving us alone. Yeah. And then, so after that, it's going to start to, they're going to start getting punished again, like the, the people out there. Right, right. And they're not going to repent. They're not going to repent. Right, absolutely. So they're sealed after the last, after the catching away, everybody else is sealed and make decision. No, 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 no. Are they not no, sealed? no, no. no. Why wouldn't uh, they uh, repent then when they start seeing? You, you mean everybody else as far as you talking about the angels? Or you just no, about, I'm man, not talking about the angels. I know oh, the angels are. Oh, okay, okay. Mankind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After we're called away, yeah, at yeah. that point, those who did who did not uh, who rejected the truth and love, yeah, those people, God will cause them to believe a lie. He oh, will send them yeah, derision yeah. and cause them to believe a lie. Yeah, so they when they see these people doing right. that stuff, and right. they see they gonna get rose up like in three yep, days, yeah, yeah, and they still not gonna still repent. not gonna see it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Paul talks about that in Second Thessalonians. Yeah, right. that God will send them derision, a delusion, to that they might believe a lie because they rejected the truth and love. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you're absolutely right about that. Uh huh. Yeah, but see why you going there? You are talking about a thousand years where the devil's going to be locked away. Right. Right. Yeah. The devil has no influence. And they're still going to do the wrong thing. And they're still going to do the same the right. wrong thing. Because man is exceedingly sinful in and of himself. You don't need, that's why people are always talking about the day, the devil made me do, the devil ain't made you do nothing. You want to do that, therefore you did it, okay? Uh, so, so, so understand, people say those things, but we're sinful in and of ourselves in this flesh. So whether the devil coerces us or not, we're going to do things of the flesh simply because that's who we are. Naturally speaking, okay. Now, once we're saved, now once we're saved, okay. Now, what governs our lives should not be the flesh, but the spirit, okay. And therefore, we don't have to do the deeds of the split of the, of the uh, uh, deeds of the uh, flesh if we're led of the spirit. Paul says, Galatians five eighteen. All right. So, so, so that's the difference. All right. But people who are doing things in sin. Okay, and I always said I've never seen the devil on TV with his with in handcuffs. I always see the person blaming the devil. All right, so so understand that the devil doesn't cause you to do anything. Now he can, based on different doctrines of devils that Paul talks about, they can't because the doctrine controls the mind, and then the mind in turn controls the behavior. So there are certain doctrines that you believe that cause you to do things because that's the way you think. But it's not the devil actually saying, "Hey, 
You know, you have no control over your body. You just, oh, the devil gave. That's not, what that, that's what people are, think that that is, but that's not what that is. He's not controlling you to where you don't have no control over your body and you just, your hand moving and you don't know it's, that's not what, you know, that's not what's going on. You, you're conscious enough to make the decisions, but it's based on what you think. All right? Yeah. Anything else? All right, we'll end here and we'll pick back up at 11.30. Yes. Um, going back to attitude, uh, there, there wasn't time. That I'm saying we, again, do this. It's not time. I guess he was trying to stop the Lord throughout the whole time. Time, right? And absolutely. He, there was no time for him. He was ready to take him out anyway. Hey, right, him. right. According to First Corinthians two, mm -hmm. where he said, uh, "Yep, if he had known." Yeah, he had, had known. Yep. See, because what he did, he thought he was doing it, but and it goes back to even the reference back here with Joseph. Uh, uh, what God meant for what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. You see that? So, so He always catches them in His craftiness. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. We'll pick back up for those who are following on by way of the internet. We'll pick back up at eleven thirty. Uh, uh, we'll uh, close out with prayer here. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your understanding. We thank you for who you are. Uh, we thank you right now for this word. And we thank you for the time to study your word, for the uh, days are evil, and we ought to be redeeming this time. And so we thank you now for your word. We thank you now for uh, uh, the technology that we're able to get the word of God out to all uh, that may want to hear. Uh, we ask right now that you continue to bless this ministry as we go forward in word, truth, deed, and in doctrine. And Father God, we uh, ask that a door opportunity be opened that we may continue to share the gospel of the grace of God. Uh, Father God, uh, give us now the heart and the desire to fight this good fight of faith, uh, to stand, Father God, after all we've done to know to do that, that we stand. Help us to put on the whole armor of God that we may withstand the wiles of the devil. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.